Hi everybody, uh, I am recording the first tutorial in a series of screencasts for Phys Edagogy uh, using Google Apps for Education uh, add-ons for efficient uh, feedback and assessment loops. So those of you that have been following the blog over the past year know that I'm pretty passionate or was about scripts and that has now become the add-ons gallery. So today I'm going to show you how to use Doctopus, Docapender, and Gubrick for an efficient assessment loop in a physical education classroom. So uh, since this tutorial is not about Doctopus itself, on the blog I will point you in the direction of some great tutorials and screencasts that already exist for how to use Doctopus. But what it essentially does is it can create class folders much like G class folders and then be an assignment manager where you can push out assignments to all of your classes. Um, I have gone ahead and I have uh, I have done that right here. So I have gone through and I have set up a Doctopus for this standard three I can be fit Doctopus assignment and I have pushed out a template document to all of uh, my students in this class. So from the Google Drive end, as you can see, uh, Dr. Puss has created class edit, view, student folders, and also a teacher folder which houses all documents for me in this um, particular um, ass assignment, or this particular class rather. So I've gone through and uh, after I pushed out my template doc, and I will show you that template, in my student record templates right here, standard three I can be fit log, and I made this incredibly basic. In the past, I would create templates that were pretty involved, and it was a lot of teacher work. So I thought if I were to do this again, I would uh, make it very simple, and then spend a little bit of time in class to take students to a computer lab, or take students to um, use the devices in my own classroom and uh, have them uh, update the template once it's pushed out to personalize it uh, for them. So this is what all students would get and then after going to the computer lab I would have students fix some of that information so it looked a little bit like this. Um, it's just going to look better. I like having the student photo on there especially when it comes to sharing with parents. So uh, that's what this template looks like and that's where Doc Appender comes in. So Doc Appender is a nifty little add-on that basically is does what I wanted AutoCorrect to do last year. So Doc Appender will take any uh, Google Doc of your choice and you fill out information on a Google form and it will append that data onto the doc that you chose. So really handy for running records or in a physical education use case um, if you're doing activity logs or assessment logs as I'm going to show you today with heart rate data, um, fitness testing records, um, you could also do it for feedback uh, towards mastery and other standards. So there's a whole lot host of uses that I could see Doc Appender being used for. Um, and let me show you how to uh, get Doc Appender set up. So this is the form I've created. This is the information that I want to go onto these little templates right here. And so I'm going to edit this form. And Doc Appender is an add on for forms. And it opens in the sidebar. And it's a three step process that's super easy. So all I need to do is select the folder where the documents are. So, one of the nice things about Doctopus is much like Google Classroom, is when I push out an assignment, which I did with this student log, it drops all of the student logs into one folder, which makes it easy to access them instead of going from student Dropbox to student Dropbox. And from there, I can choose um, a, oh, I choose the folder and I click Next. Then I need to identify which question is going to have the information that I want. I want it to be the name question. So I'm going to save and populate that question. So what did I just do? On the name question on my form, you can see it pulled the names of those documents 
and put them in as options on the form, which means when I select that particular option, it will push the data to that document. Super handy. Then I click Next. And it's going to let me choose what information I want appended to the document, which is all this information. And I have the option to make them separate bulleted lists, separate vertical tables or rows in a single horizontal table. And I want the last version for this particular um, tutorial. And I'm going to click Save Changes. And that's it. Doc Appender is done. So I can click View Live Form. And I'm going to close out a couple of these tabs and move some around. And so now I've got my template information, my templated doc. And I've got my form that's going to append information to it. And I may do this as a teacher, but quite frankly, I might put this on the students as well. I could have a station set up in my classroom with a couple of iPads with this form loaded. And once I check students' heart rates, they could go enter in that information on the iPad themselves by simply selecting in the drop-down menu their name, the date, the assessment type, grade, and then what their heart rate was. And let's say it was 175. I have a space for comments. I would never have students enter anything there. I will show you what I will use that for in a second. And then I click Submit. Once I do that, Doc Appender goes to work. And Doc Appender then appends that data in a table on this document. It's magic. So let's try that again. I'll select myself, select uh, tomorrow, the grade is still 6, assessment type heart rate check, and we'll say it was 190 this time, and submit. And third time's the charm, we'll do it one more time, and we'll say this was on Monday's heart rate check, I'm still in those areas, and it was 210 on this time, and I click submit. And on my document right here, it is now appended all of that information. So it's created a running log. And you can probably see now as a PE teacher how this would be incredibly handy and beneficial to have this data uh, digitally shared between you and the student where it's no longer pencil and clipboard. Um, it's all in one place, can be accessed from any device, shared with parents easily, and it also leaves a space for comments. So I'm going to show you how to do that in a second. But from the student view, I have an incognito window open here. And this is the student folder the class edit, the class view, this is the digital Dropbox, and now I pushed out that assignment so it shows up in the folder. So if a student, and don't be confused, I have two Google accounts at work here, uh, personal and work, the student clicks on this log, and there is the data right there, immediately shared with them. So pretty cool. So if I go back to the teacher view, and I can insert comments like, good start, or good work today. I can even, if I wanted to insert special characters, I could draw a particular character, I think, and I can, let's see, and don't judge me on my artwork, but um, I can write, wow, and I can even make that bigger. And let's go up to, oh, size 18 font. At least with the text, we'll, oops, we'll make it a little smaller because that is kind of obscenely huge. So I can even specify, uh, my comments can get more specific depending on what the information contains. And for the student view, they would then see the same thing right there. And think of the power of a table like this when you share it with parents at parent-teacher conferences, things of that nature. Uh, pretty powerful stuff. Now, I would caution you, the next step I'm going to share here is back on my Doctopus spreadsheet. I have attached a rubric called a Gubric to this assignment. And I'm going to use this Gubric to grade a student on their performance here. So one thing I would caution you when you're measuring any performance standard in physical education, you know, in my opinion, uh, have multiple sources of evidence. Standard three for Shape America, uh, in student-friendly language, we use I Can Be Fit. Um, it is uh, 
you know, there's a lot of ways students can demonstrate that they're fit or they have a knowledge about the fit principle and um, other than just performance assessments. So I would say that this is just a small piece of students being able to demonstrate mastery in this standard and that I wouldn't consider using this data as the only source of assessment for grading purposes. With that out of the way, um, let's go to Gubrick. Again, I'm not going to show you how to set up Gubrick because uh, this tutorial is not on that. But um, I have attached a Gubrick to this and it will look for the associated rubric. It will pull it open since the exercise um, was up in the target heart rate zone above 90% of the checks. They are distinguished. I have my comments that I've already entered and I can email the rubric score to this student. I submit and paste to the doc and it will go ahead and put a rubric score in there. Now the, the assessment loop is complete. I have the data that's been collected in this table with doc appender. I have the score and I have a typo in the score that has been given um, and it's been emailed to the student and I can share it like this with uh, parents and students at parent teacher conferences um, or just when we, re we report out. So uh, really kind of a, uh, a handy loop right there. On my uh, Doctopus spreadsheet, I will also get a tally of all these scores inside, um, inside the spreadsheet as well. Now one of the things I might consider doing with um, this type of system is currently this template can be edited by the student, um, but I would probably from the get-go, I would probably once I had students change their name and put in their picture, etc., I would probably embargo this document for grading. Uh, on the Doctopus assignment tools, it allows you to uh, embargo docs for grading. And the reason I would probably do that is because then students can't edit any of this information, nor do I want them to edit at this point. Once I have given, we've logged all their data and I've given them feedback um, and a score, then I might put some reflection questions, open it up for students to um, add their own reflection, maybe set goals for the next quarter and go from there. Uh, and I have everything tracked in one particular document. So that's a little bit about Doc Appender and how to use Doc Appender in the classroom. This is part one in a series of four or five. So uh, I have several ideas on how we, we might use this in physical education and I look forward to sharing. Uh, hopefully you find this useful and I hope you attempt to try to use it in your classroom. Please let me know your thoughts. You can find me on Twitter at Adam P. Howell or leave a comment in the blog post thread.